Mr. Investor, welcome back to the channel, baby. Okay, bingo cowboys. Today I'm going to be talking about some very interesting topics. We'll talk about a bingo customer, a researcher at Queen Mary's University of London, and what they've said about both Oxford Nanopore and bio nanogenomics. We'll also talk about whole genome sequencing, the UK sales manager Joe Butler, and somebody getting involved in conversation. Simon says. We'll also look at the chart mill predictions for bio nanogenomics. So please remember, none of this is financial advice, it's for entertainment only. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can hit the thumbs up, click the subscribe, drop some comments below. If you want to send any donations, I have a PayPal link in my description box. And most of all, thank you for your love and support on the channel. Let's get into this video. Okay, this ain't gonna be a long video, baby. This is gonna be straight to the point. So we see Bill Tyne, Queen Mary's University of London genomics facility. This guy is a genomics technician. He's got a PhD in phylogenetics and molecular virology. This guy has been involved in science for many years from the year 2000 where he was a scientific officer at Centers for Ecology and Hydrology. He was a research associate at University of Warwick for four years and then now he's a genomics technician at Queen Mary's University of London. So talking about the recent posts you can see that they're hiring, they're looking for human resources. The next post is bionanogenomics. And if you scroll down a bit more, he talks about bionanogenomic sapphire and he gives his opinion on sapphire and Oxford nanopores Prometheon. In fact, this guy has said the sapphire is a fantastic optical density mapping platform and the perfect partner to our Prometheon. At the genomics facility, Queen Mary's University of London, these guys are innovators, they're researchers. These guys were involved in the study that made the news all over the place. The pilot study led by Genomics England and Queen Mary's University of London and undertaken in partnership with the National Institute for Health Research Bioresource found that whole genome sequencing led for new diagnosis for 25% of participants. This study study was the one that we previously discussed is part of the 100,000 genome project and the project was established in 2013. They aim to sequence 100,000 whole genomes from the NHS patients and their families. This whole genome sequencing study made the news everywhere. Literally it was on the Guardian, Financial Times, Queen Mary's was writing their blog about it and also the Daily Mail even got involved. Everybody was giving their perspectives on how great this could be and they were suggesting the Guardian that whole genome sequencing could save the NHS millions of pounds. So within the genomics facility at Queen Mary's University University of London, they have Bionano Sapphire. Talking about our high throughput optical mapping for long range genomic scaffolding, it can be used for de novo assembly and has additional applications in the detection of large genomic structural variations. And remember the hot new kid on the block, the one that IPO'd in London, Oxford Nanopore Prometheon Sequencer, is one of the machines that they also use. And this guy is saying that the Sapphire is a fantastic optical density mapping platform, the perfect partner to Oxford Nanopore's Prometheon. So what does this machine do? It provides real time, cost effective, high throughput, long read DNA and RNA sequencing. It's a sequencer. It's capable of running 24 flow cells simultaneously and it has an output of 220 GB per cell. As such, the Prometheon is ideal for large scale genome sequencing projects. People were asking me about Oxford Nanopore, Bionanogenomics has said they're in a blue ocean. And they were asking me, is there any other companies that could be potentially competition? And the truth is I need to do some more research. I haven't found any competition yet. I've only seen Nabsis that is mentioned to be one of the leaders in optical mapping also. There used to also be a company alongside BioNano and Nabsis called Opgen and apparently within this article it states that Opgen discontinued their optical mapping services and so the optical mapping market share was then assumed by its competitors. So it suggested this article was in 2020 that both BioNano Genomics and Nabsis are now the biggest competitors within optical mapping. This article was released in 2020. It's called Advances in Optical Mapping for Genomic Research. In other news, with this pilot study this 100,000 genome pilot study. When Joe Butler was talking about 80% of the family should theoretically be able to get a genetic diagnosis. Whole genome sequencing made a diagnosis in only 25% of cases, 437 cases. There's 1,309 families without a diagnosis. Maybe it's time to look at what Sapphire can add. And the quote within the text says there's 80% of rare diseases that have a genetic cause. Joe Butler then said if 80% have a cause in the future, combinations of good genetics technologies should be able to get 100% diagnostic yield. That's the hope, right? Not saying that BioNano alone will get us there, but it could make big inroads, no? Simon Barnett decided to get involved and said, I don't think 100% diagnostic yield is achievable in the foreseeable future. Even if a method or combination of methods could detect substantially all variants in a proband, we'd still have a ton of variants of unknown significance. There are still too many unknown etiologies. He then went on to give his opinion saying, as far as he can tell, fully haplotype resolved diploid assembly seems like the best method, though probably harder to scale. What's interesting to see is Arkinvest 
Invest is now engaging with BioNanogenomics UK sales manager. If they don't have any care in investing in BioNanogenomics, why does Simon continue to engage and get involved in conversation? So their argument with Kathy Woods was saying that BioNanogenomics is not scalable. So if they demonstrate scalability and if we're starting to see a lot of adoption of Sapphires, is that the time ARK Invest will then decide to jump on or will the valuation be too high by then? So people also giving insight to what they think is going to happen by the end of year, how many installs are going to happen. So if we manage to install 20 Sapphires and we were aiming for 150 systems by the end of the year, BioNanogenomics is known as well for under-promising and over-delivering. So if they've stated and you know they've reiterated, Eric said by the end of year that they're going to stick to the 150, is this to give us a surprise amount of installations later on? So if we go over this chart mills and we look at the analysis, the tools over there, they say that the overall fundamentals of Bingo, they get a 5 out of 10, stating that Bingo shows excellent growth but is valued quite expensive already. In terms of profitability, they're growing, so they're not focusing on profitability right now. They're trying to grow as fast as possible, trying to get the machine out there. And if this snowball effect happens where, you know, it gets built into guidelines, they get insurance reimbursement, people start to adopt the machine, people start to come up with more research that inspires more people to take on the machine. We might be seeing this snowball effect of adoption within the academic industry and the labs. So what's interesting to see here, they're stating that in terms of valuation compared to the industry average book ratio of 5.78, bingo is valued rather cheaply. So how can it be both expensive and quite cheap? In terms of growth and talking about EPS, they say that the earnings per share has grown 71.43% over the past year. The revenue has grown by 114% over the past year. This is very strong growth. Based on estimates for the next five years, it's going to have an average revenue growth per year of 85%. Revenue growth will be accelerating in the next five years is what they're estimating. And they're showing here with more adoption of the machines, with more flow cells used, they're going to have this kind of compounding effect, estimating $181 million in revenue by 2025. In terms of financial health, you can see here it's all green. No problem paying down any short-term obligations. They also have a cash pot, I believe, of $326 million. The Altman Z-score of 40.89 says that Bingo is in not in any danger for bankruptcy at the moment. Debt to equity ratio of zero. So if we take a look at the bigger picture, We've got a big cash runway. We're focusing on growth. Right now, we need to focus on growth, get the machine out there. By some factors, they're saying that the valuation is expensive right now. Some factors are saying that the valuation is rather cheap. We've dropped into this $4 range. Tell me what your predictions are for next week. Do you think we're going to start flying up again? Do you think we're going to drop into the freeze? And then what will be your actions and behavior based on that? If we drop further, are you going to be increasing your position? Are you going to be decreasing your position? Are you going to be exiting? For me, I'm seeing all the factors building around bingo and I'm seeing in the long term, is it going to be growing as a business? Are they going to be able to sell those Sapphire machines to scale up? And will they be achieving these kind of yearly revenues by 2024, 2025? Do I like what customers are saying about Sapphire being the perfect partner to Oxford Nanopore? Going over to tip ranks, do I like what the analysts are saying when they're saying it's a strong buy, all three analysts, and they're stating there's 172% upside potential, $12 price target on average. Even the lowest estimate is stating that BioNanogenomics within the next 12 months could be reaching their estimate of $10. On the high side, they're saying $14. Right now, we're at $4.41. Over on Investor Place, not only do we have Larry Raymar, who is posting that he's long on bingo, but we have Louis Navalier. This guy does not have any shares in BioNanogenomics as of this article. It states here on the date of publication, neither Louis Navalier nor the Investor Place research staff member primarily responsible for this article held, either directly or indirectly, any positions in BioNanogenomics. And this article is very positive and very bullish around how BioNanogenomics is growing and some of the achievements and milestones they've made this year. Given all factors at play, this is still a high potential growth stock and it's not getting any love from the market. And taking a closer look, you'll see why this stock, which many are still dismissing as a meme play that's fizzled out, may be a great opportunity at present price levels. It seems like everything's going right with the company. They're increasing sales. They're increasing the amount of flow sales they're sold. They've got lots of cash on hand. They don't have any debt. And going here to Yahoo Finance, we go over here, we can look at total debt and it's dash dash. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and feelings. I'm going to continue to buy BioNanogenomics. And if the stock price continues to drop, I'm going to continue to pick up shares because I believe in the long-term potential of this company and where this company can be in five to eight years time. Finally, I want to tell you to watch out. There are people who are publishing on all the different boards. So if you go to my Twitter, you'll see this. I put this up. This was a comment that I received uh, earlier on yesterday, as soon as I posted my video. The guy's trying to spread fear, trying to discredit, divide and spread this information. So this guy said lots of negative comments. He's dropped like four or five. I don't know if he's a paid basher. I don't know who he's working for. I don't know if he's short in the stock, but he said, I bought at seven and I'm stuck and I'm stuck in that price. 
for more than one year. So he's posted this comment here in November. One year ago, this was around 50 cents. I see you. I don't know how he could be stuck at $7 when buying nanogenomics over a year and a bit ago that was floating, you know, under the dollar range. It was in the cents. Always watch out because what they do is they have the ability to have this kind of social tool that scrapes the market sentiment. They want to see what retail investors sentiment is. They want to see how you're feeling about the company. They know where your stop losses are because some of them actually have the ability to buy alpha. When they're buying this alpha information, what I believe happens is they know where people's stop losses are. So if they manage to drive the market down and they trigger your stop loss, that's an automatic sell on your side. It continues to drop the price even more, triggering other people's stop losses. Then some people just sell because they're worried generally and it continues to drop even more. And then they can continue to accumulate and gobble up cheap shares. And I want to remind you, if you look back in Google, the 13th of May, 2021, we were at $4.41 back then. So if they spread misinformation, gobble up the cheap shares, and then we drive all the way up to $8.40, $9, they're getting some massive upside potential for swing trading. Or they could be accumulating it for the long run. I don't know what the purpose is for these guys. I've seen so many different bots. I don't know if these people are also paid bashers. And whoever this is, he's left up all of these kind of fear mongering statements apart from this one, because this one doesn't make sense. He bought in at seven. How can you buy in at seven when the stock price was around 50 cents? Now, always remember, this is not financial advice. I can't tell you to buy. I can't tell you to sell. I can't tell you to hold any shares in any company because I'm not a financial advisor and this is for entertainment only. But me, long and strong, baby, I got two positions. One of my positions is stuck at $9 and then in an ISA account, which is kind of a tax-free account, I've got an average price now of $5.50 because I continue to buy on a weekly basis. I have 1,500 shares in total and most of them are in that kind of uh, ISA account. So if we do see some upswings towards, you know, the $12 range, the $14 range, the price predictions that the analysts have put out there for the next 12 months, I'm going to be up by some juicy profits. But I'm not selling bio nanogenomics for years to come. Even if it does swing to $12 or $14, I won't be selling because I'm holding this and I believe in the long-term potential. In five years, what could this stock price be if they manage to get that snowball effect of adoption and then all of the flow cells, that kind of razor blades model, where they can continue generating revenue from flow cells for years to come. Not to mention this kind of globes wire article talking about the nano nozzle patent and if the nano nozzle ever gets ready to go well bio nano has said that they believe that combining the nano channel arrays with nano detectors such as nano pores may one day enable high throughput massively parallel long read sequencing so effectively it will become also a long read sequencing company i want to analyze you know over the next five to eight years i want to see where this company goes what it becomes as a business but i also want to see does this happen because if this manages to happen then they've got a new market they can eat into they can eat into that long read sequencing market so thank you very much for watching please drop me a like drop me a subscribe drop me some comments if you appreciate the content and you'd like to donate or drop me some tips please use the paypal link in my description box below but even just you guys liking this video and dropping me some comments is enough for me thank you so much for the love and support always remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only and i'll catch you in that next video mr over and out baby